Not to mince words, Mr. Epstein. The four man guitar groups are going to go way out. Besides that, I don't like the sound of the report. That was Dick Rowe. And she turned down the opportunity to sign the Beatles. 1962. That contraption is nothing but a toy, and even as a toy, it will never catch on. That was William Orton, the head of Western Union. And he turned down an opportunity to buy Alexander Graham Bell's telephone pad. My all time favorite. Stick to driving a truck because you're never going to make it as a singer. It was Eddie Bond refusing to be Elvis Presley's agent. In 1954. Rash on the spot, not thought out judgments, decisions based only on our own current thinking, often do not turn out well for us. As we continue on now into Mark's Gospel, moving on into chapter 6. And Jesus is, is still early in his ministry. He's left Nazareth. He's been to Capernaum and all along the sea coast of Galilee. He's been up in the mountains and then left on a boat to go to the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. He's been down to the cities of what was called the Decapolis. Well, it's still called that. Ten grouping of ten cities on the southeastern side of, of the Sea of Galilee. Now he's, he's been tired out and he thinks, I think I'm going to go back home. And you would think that he would be well received. But it was not to be. Not so much, I don't think, because he was disliked. I think he was raised there, they knew him. I think they wanted Jesus to remain true to their idea of who he was. You know, I was told once that we don't know people. We just form ideas about people. And when I do, I want you to fit my idea of who you're supposed to be. That way, I get to be right. We have trouble ego of our ideas, our old entrenched ideas about people, about life. About a week ago, or maybe about 10 days ago, my daughter came into the dining room and she had a paper in my old hometown, hometown back in Georgia. She stuck up and she said, you know who that is? I looked and there's this grooming of people in white coats, obviously doctors. One of, them, one of the doctors, they were six or seven, one of them was a lady doctor. And I said, I have no idea, there's a bunch of doctors. She said, no, the lady doctor. She said, that's, that's Laura Lyles. And I said, no. You mean little Laura Lyles that used to come over and do the sleepovers and spend the nights and was in your little 10, 11 year old cheerleading group? He said, yeah. I said, no. He said, yeah, she's an accomplished orthopedic surgeon. Some of them enjoy the leaves, man. If you seem and appear suddenly radically different from what my idea of you is, mine and our first reaction is usually disbelief. So Jesus goes back to Nashville, and he had been down in, in one of the cities in Capitol Hill town, a small place called Nassau, where he healed. Uh, he drove out a demon from, from a guy that was uh, very possessed, and the demon comes out with his name Legion, and he went into the swine. Well, Nassau is uh, it's not a short distance from that. It's, it's some distance. And there was no Facebook and Twitter in that, trust me, 
So they, at best, they had heard a rumor or two about this hometown guy who did just some kind of miracle thing and was trying to teach. Probably all they knew. So in the synagogue of that day, Jesus begins to teach. In their questions, you can hear them putting up this giant tsunami wall of disbelief rather than have their old ideas shattered about who Jesus was supposed to be. Isn't he the carpenter? I mean, we know who this guy is. We know his mother and his family. They live here. They asked him five rapid-fire questions without even giving Jesus a chance to respond. Because they weren't asking the question. They were proclaiming how right their old ideas about him were. They weren't thinking yet. They were making a very rash judgment about Jesus with only their old and demonstrably wrong ideas to work with. That was a far more catastrophic decision if it was persistent than without the records refusing to sign the Beatles or any bond refusing to be an Elvis and Asian because it would have eternal consequences. Mark says that when he returned to his hometown and went to the synagogue to teach, they were not only unbelieving, they were offended. They were offended not because Jesus had come home, they were offended that he would dare such teach, teach such absurdity in opposition of who they thought he should do. The word offended in the English is translated from the Greek word scandalon, from which we get our word, guess what? Scandal. So Jesus returns home and the hometown folks and even his family were offended and scandalized at who he claimed to be. So if you're ever experiencing pain of rejection, which I have, go to Jesus with it. Because he too has been rejected by someone he cared a whole lot about. It was not offensive to them because he was there. He was offensive to them because he dared make them to see that their ideas of him were wrong. And that's why that is one of Satan's most effective tools, is using what we already think see by what I'm saying. Isn't this a carpenter? He's doing what? No, no. And Jesus, my trade, was a carpenter. Actually, the Greek word is tectum, which means crafting more than carpenter. So, so that he was, as a man, was skilled with his hands. He could make things. He could fix them as a man. And as God Almighty, he still can. He can make fear receive. He can make the sick well. And he can fix a broken life. And I know because he fixed mine. On October the 9th, 1980, he was that. Alcoholism, depression, shame, legal trouble, and financial ruin. Jesus can fix broken lives. But we have to give him all the broken hearts. We have to give him everything that's not working, including our old thinking and our old ideas. 
about life, about other people, and maybe more especially about ourselves. We have to admit that ideas that we have held and cherished for years may not be the right ideas or things. As you see, I can't arrive at a new place God has for me until I am willing to be where I am. The inability of those in the synagogue that to let go of their old ideals and thinking about who Jesus was supposed to be. It was potentially spiritually faint. Why? Mark says in the gospel this morning, and he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. In other words, he could do no mighty work except when he did. And then he mocked because of their unbelief. What does that tell us? It should tell us that there were times when the Lord, due to unbelief, will not override our old ideas, not because He can't, of course He can, but because He chooses not to. And that's why what we're doing right now is important. What are we doing? We're being together. Great prophets of Anaya and St. Paul, both monsters, do not fail to gather together. Do not fail to assemble yourselves together. Because Satan knew that when we put away to ourselves and revert to our old ways and our old thinking and our old errant ideas with time, like those in the synagogue that day, we deign to let go of it. And Satan feeds our ego, convincing us we're right. But being around each other, coming to the Lord's table and receiving Him in the Blessed Sacrament, fellowshipping with Him, hearing God's Word, those who have been following Jesus, then we can see God working in each other's lives. And Satan hates that and hates it. Because then it's hard, if not impossible, to pull us away from the Lord. We need to be together to see what the Lord is doing in each of our lives. There's an old story back in the 18, late 1800s. And it was told it's true, whether it is or not, I won't certify. It says in Minnesota there was this old preacher who had four or five churches and he was on the right to go from one to the other. And he was on the last uh, visit to the last church on this route and came up to, to this river. And the church was about a half a mile away, but he had to get across the river and it was frozen. It was frozen. Cold and so, so he ties his horse up and starts, so, you know, he's down in the aisle, listening to cracks. The harder he gets, the more scared he gets, and finally he's down on his hands and knees, he's kind of. Right in the middle of that, he hears a big commotion, and he thought the whole thing had taken in, but he realized he didn't. He looked to the left hand of the river, and here comes these seven or eight big manly lumberjacks. Across the river, mule team, eight mules, big load of timber on them that just talking to each other like a baby. So he kind of gets up, <laughs> kind of embarrassed, and he goes on time his horse and just gallops across the ice. Well, nothing had changed. Temperature had changed. The river had changed. The thickness of the ice had to change. He had just formed a new idea about the ice. The 
because he saw it working for others. We needn't be too quick to judge those in the synagogue for holding fast to the old ideas about the Lord. Satan's persistent. We all are very susceptible to pulling away to ourselves and falling into our old ways of thinking. It has happened to me in more than one case. And Satan is always happy to help us along in doing that. And if that happens to me or any of you, I pray that in spite of what we're thinking, and no matter the motive, maybe I'm going to come back to church just to make a life. Here. No I just pray we come back because if we can just get the body through the door and back among God's people, for the Holy Spirit is working in, for and among God's people, we can just get what we are in that home of peace under the sound of the gospel. And by the grace of Almighty God, our hearts and our minds and our souls are sure to follow. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.